Hey, what's up, everyone? Brian Life here, live in effect. Um, I don't really, I don't ever do lives, but I just feel compelled today to chat a bit, help anybody out who's struggling or who's on their journey, on their quest to get sober. Um, I know as the summer or the spring rolls around and these beautiful sunny days start to bubble up, um, it's hard, you know, it's hard to see yourself not celebrating and laying back and doing what you usually used to do. But, um, like right now, for instance, I'm abstaining from eating um, until after 2 p.m. And it's really difficult. I get hungry, my, my body's like, oh, I don't like this. It starts grumbling, you know. And then after 2, I feel great. When I eat, I can taste the food. I really cherish it. It's really delicious. Um, so life is like that, you know, a little bit of suffering and discipline, you can have a great long-term reward, you know. So the reason why I'm even going live to chat is uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, I've been five years sober, 5.10 months, like so five years, 10 months sober. I'm coming up on six years. I used to smoke 25 years, I'd say, most of my whole life. I'm four, actually more than that. I'm 44, but, um, 44 but I've been smoking since I was like 12 14 years old but heavily I'd say in my late 20s mid 20s so let's just say 25 years of smoking every day all day and day and uh and I'm not, right now I'm five years sober so like it's possible like I never thought it would be possible never thought any day I could go by without thinking about it I call that weed math like you know, figuring out how to get it, how much, how much do I have left, who's going to come, what time, what <clears throat> all this mental wrestling with math of like accumulating and, you know, the whole isolating and getting greedy, like, oh, I don't want to go visit that person because I don't have enough to share or they don't ever share with me and all this selfish craziness that happens with needing your fix and needing your stash. So those kind of things just fall off. Like it's hard for the first month, first two weeks are fucking brutal. You know, you go through withdrawals, I'm sure you guys all know, sweats, um, nightmares, barely any sleep, all kinds of ways of saying, how can I get it? Like, what can I do that's an alternative? All these things that I see popping up. I ended up smoking tons of cigarettes in a row, expecting the, the tobacco to get me high, but it was just a fixation and my body was just panicking. But it goes away, like, after three to four weeks, you do start to slow down with that panic, with that need, with that physical addiction then it's a mental thing but anyway I wanted to answer some questions if anyone um, had any so let me check this out um, what made me stop basically just miserable uh, I couldn't lie to myself anymore every day I'd wake up and I would just that would be my main concentration and I had a terrible financial crash I'm an artist and, and I do art for a living so I was really making great money and I had weed delivered to me in Brooklyn this was back in 2008 uh, before it was legalized and stuff so they would just you just text somebody and they come and deliver on a bike they'd have like a briefcase with like, like a little case with all these different strands and everything was a major and I was spending like 60 bucks every two days three days um, sorry I'm outside so I may have to cover myself but I wasn't getting my artwork done and I was just like lethargic and going it like oh I'll smoke this blunt just I'll only smoke half of the blunt and then I end up smoking half a little bit further and I said oh, all right well it's almost done I don't like roaches so I might as well smoke the rest and then basically I'd have to take a nap 25 20 minutes later you know it's like I used to think pot would get me all excited to do trippy artwork and get me in the zone and all the shit but it was just it was just an addict mentality of like getting the fix getting the like rolling it doing the adventure of like ooh, brand new car brand new phone brand new this and that and then it wears off you know it's like we get excited about the journey of getting something and then once we get it we realize it's just in us just like all the paraphernalia or various like dabs and uh, fucking crystallized shit or any kind of like pipe or fucking any kind of anything and i don't mean to say these words to trigger you but all they are is vehicles to get that thing inside of you to get that high like and then you're like oh i don't like this it's not as strong or oh it's not enough i need more or whatever so i would top out my tolerance was super high and uh basically i was just a fucking slave to that every day and i wasn't producing art i wasn't doing anything you can look up my artwork at at brian life uh on instagram you'll see 
most of my life, I mean, I was creative and productive, but as you get older, it's harder to maintain at your energy levels, and you just get twisted and distorted, and you're fucked up, basically, you guys know, you know, high all the time, you don't want to see anybody, you isolate, it used to be a thing where I'd be with people in a, in a round circle, you know, share it, pass it, but then it became like, what's mine, oh, I don't like to be around them people, insecurities, of course, I became like a master at like, oh, I'm not paranoid, they're not talking about me, or I'm not, um, self-conscious but even that is a fucking cover-up because you just get really good at putting down those self-conscious thoughts or these stupid things where you think the whole world revolves around you these like mental twisted inverted weird thoughts that you get when you're high all the time I mean sure but then you only select with the safe people the people that are cool like that you trust and even with them there's a buffer and a filter so anyway I was just smoking it all day and day and I wasn't getting shit done. I was coming up with a million excuses in my life. Whenever I'd visit family, I wouldn't couldn't wait to like 20 minutes get out get out the, you know, if there was a family holiday or something like, "Oh, you know, I'd be stressing out like when can I go get high and come back?" And then I'd be like, "Fuck. Well, do they know and shit? You know, you don't want to really be found out." All that kind of like sneaky bullshit. I mean, some people smoke with their family growing up. I don't know. I didn't. My mother would barely know, but basically I wasn't there. I was always fogged up. Um, yeah, my career, my life, everything was like split apart. Like I always say it like you're chasing your tail, like um caught in the weeds, you know, I was just basically fucked up. So let me read another question. Um What helped me uh best and what helped me most during the first thirty days? What helped me actually I I went sober for one whole year by myself. There was no Facebook group. There was no Marijuana is Anonymous, but that's key right there. So I just suffered. I was actually bipolar. I had a manic episode. I was all fucked up. Basically, I was broke as fuck. I couldn't buy anything. I paid five bucks for some kind, but which was not even a full joint. Sorry, but like, don't mean to say triggering words, but you know that. I was done with that in five, half a minute. And then I was like, oh, I need more. So. Pretty much being so flat broke, being an adult with like terrible debt, realizing like I'm fucked. My ex-wife was like, wow, that's all you care about? And you know, I come back off the porch and I still needed more. You're scraping everything. So what I'm trying to say is like, I basically just couldn't even afford it, right? But I was also mentally broke. It wasn't just financially or dust in my pockets, the lint in my pockets. It was just my soul was broke, right? So I went for a year sober, but then I was like, oh, that's amazing. You know, I went to outpatient programs for like dual diagnosis, right? Because I thought I was bipolar. I did get put on medicine for one year. And um, I also needed sleep meds because I was so fucking, I couldn't even sleep. It was like three day, three hours every day, you know? So basically, um, with the, all that, like long story short is I went to therapy and outpatient program like for dual diagnosis. So basically during the day for like two hours, we would talk about drug drug abuse, like in general, not just marijuana, and then um, uh, mental like distorted behaviors or whatever. Just um, you know, I can't even think of the word because I was basically so fucked up. But yeah, so I got through that, and um, but then after the year, I was at work and I'm like, oh yeah, I can um, smoke at lunch. Maybe I'll just smoke somebody else's, you know. Yeah, I just smoke a little bit here and there. My tolerance, I mean, shit. I just went a whole year without smoking. I might as well, right? I got this. And then the next day I smoked again at lunch. And then I was like, hey, how much for blah, blah, blah. And then it was morning, noon, and night. Morning, noon, and night. And I went deep in, harder than I ever went. Just really just pushing that. You know, I think I smoked the whole eighth in one day. Like two days, maybe. Barely two days. And I was fucked back to to zero again so my ex-wife found out about marijuana is anonymous that's the short answer to all this right I love this group there was no group there was no Facebook groups about this there was no support and accountability which I love about being here in this group we all support each other but there are a lot of triggering words or posts or new people popping up and it's like it's almost like triggering some people even continue to smoke or talk about it Mar so when I went to Marijuana is Anonymous, it's straight up just like meetings. It's called MA and uh, there is one and it's all adopted from the AA. So the book, The 12 Steps, instead of saying alcohol brought us to our knees or whatever, we just say marijuana brought us to our knees. So they just replaced the words. And the group is not 
substance abuse of all drugs. It's literally only a bunch of pothead, ex potheads sitting in a room chatting and following the steps. And there's people that have been sober for two years in there, two months, two weeks. You know, I came in there bawling, crying. I was out of my shit. And there was just a group of like four or five people every every Friday, you know, twice a week or something, right? And just the stories and sharing stuff together in those meetings for one hour gave me the power to like keep moving on every day. Just like in when we read some of the posts in this group, we get this inspiration to like hold on for one more day. So, so MA, Marijuana is Anonymous, they have a website. It's marijuana-anonymous.org. They have a free app but you do have to put the dash in the middle so you just have to ah, see the sun many, many days i just stayed in with the shades shut just smoking away go back out at night you know anyway um so yeah five years sober in 10 months i'm getting close to six i'm not showing off i'm just trying to let you know that after 25 or more years of smoking i actually got clean and like so going to ma every week is what helped me get sober um but now they have zoom meetings if you look at any of my posts, you'll see that I always post up this document. It's a Google Doc. Pretty much there's a meeting every hour, every day, all across America and in some other countries like Amsterdam, funny enough, um, Canada. Uh, there's just other countries, like there's districts, you know? So you hop in on a Zoom meeting, it's all anonymous. You don't even have to show your face. Like you could just show a photo of a, of a emoji or something, you know, and just, but I would, advise you to try to just join in because nobody it's all safe everyone's all love you know nobody cares and actually it's not about you it's really just about being sober and uh trying to trying to help each other get through so there's a lot of strength and a lot of stories that happen within the zoom meetings don't be afraid don't be shy you don't have to speak you don't even have, just listen like i appreciate you guys all listening to me whoever's here uh, let me read some questions sorry um so ma is what helped me um there's a free app and then there's Zoom meetings right now because of COVID. But um, pretty much every day, all you have to do is look at the document. I've posted the Google document. I'll try to post it in these comments. Uh, I, I've never, I never do live, so I'll try it. Let me see. Sorry if I haven't read your. Uh, do you still have mental withdrawals after five years? No, I never have mental withdrawals. When weed became legalized, like say three years ago, it was tough when I smelt it really strong on the train or people were close to me I'm like oh shit like it would just hit me like a ton of bricks I also went to a Cypress Hill concert which is really not smart that was ridiculous at the House of Blues in Boston and I just thought oh you know no big deal because back when I used to go to the House of Blues they wouldn't before it was legalized in um, Massachusetts or whatever they wouldn't let you smoke they the bouncers would kick you out but I was in there and it was just the whole place was cloudy and I got in for free from a DJ that I know who's DJing open up from and I was like, yeah, thinking I'm all the man, like, oh, this is gonna be great. But it was probably also my ego, my subconscious addict self wanting to be around that lifestyle. Because you'll find that like, you'll still have the tendencies to like live that kind of life or you'll, in the beginning, you'll admire people like Snoop Dogg or like Joe Rogan or somebody or anyone who smokes and you'd be like, damn, they're successful. How are they doing it? We don't know their financial problems. We don't know their like mental fucking forgetfulness. Their sleepy days where they just shut off. Or how many people are working for them, you know, to, to make themselves look good. And in society and social media, whatever, we always show our best foot forward. We always try to show our best. So all I'm saying is I'm not them. And I hit scrape rock bottom face down, like fucked over marijuana. Like Mary Jane just lived, she was whipping me like, I was her slave, you know, oh, it's natural, it's just a plant from the ground, so isn't poison ivy, so isn't like piranhas, you know, but they'll eat your ass up, so like, that plant will take, take care of you, you know, it'll, it'll help you, it'll bless you, but it brought me to many places, it was great, but then, like anything, you abuse food, you'll get obese, you know, you'll get tired, lethargic, you'll get so big you can't get out of a bed, you know, uh, if you drive a car without taking care of it, you know what I'm saying, the car's gonna fucking the axle will break and you'll crash i don't know axle rose <laughs> like if you do too many things like it's just obviously you know if i drink too much water it's gonna be not good for me right so um do i think of it no i, I after a year it just after a few months like four months no actually I, i'm not gonna lie i was like oh maybe i could smoke and moderate for like but the more you get sober the more months go by you just like 
I don't want that. I love this. Like, I got myself. I, I love myself now. Even you guys who are just whoever, a few days or a few months, you're so, like, connected to yourself that you don't want to lose that. Just like how you were so connected to the marijuana that you didn't want to lose that. Now you got yourself and you're together and your thoughts are clearer and you're, like, confident and love, like, proud. Like, you're like, wow, I love myself enough to not hurt myself anymore. That's the important things that start to tip the scale. So like, yeah, I mean, I would be like, oh, they look like they're having fun or like I'd smell it and remember some of the good times. But that's the problem is the more you get sober, like the further you get, be careful of the first few weeks because you may start to see the glitz and the glamour, like like the shiny object, like, oh, it looks so pretty over there. You know, if I, if I smoke, oh, you just see the good side because you're not close enough to see the ugly side because now you went away from it. It's like there's an island and the island looks beautiful. And then you get closer and closer, you realize it's infested, you know what I'm saying? So just don't forget why you quit. Like, don't forget that it's going to be ugly. There is a consequence. There's a shitty side to, there's a low to getting up. So if you're in the middle and balanced, then you're good. I remember um, Michael Jackson, uh, too high to get over, too low to get under. You're stuck in the middle and the pain is thunder. So I felt, I mean, I'm trying to say that it's good to be in the middle and balanced, but I also felt stuck in the middle and I was too high to get over, too low to get under. I was just all fucked up. So basically, like, when you get sober and, like, yeah, I don't know, I'm harping on that question. The short answer is, like, no, I don't think about it. I really wake up, I don't, it doesn't even enter my mind. When I see these, this group, sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, it pops up. I, you know, obviously I'm reminded, but it's not like I'm fond of it. It's not like I'm like desiring it at all because I'm just, I'm out of that, you know. It's like kind of like you shed your skin. You just shed, I swear, you sh after a few months to a year, you will literally just shed that whole lifestyle. It'll be gone. It's just not a part of you anymore. And everyone else moves on and does it, whatever, but you're just like, okay. And you're not, I'm not judging them. I'm, I actually am. I'm not going to lie. I know that they're fucked up. I know they're in a fucked up place. Because anyone who does any intoxicant or, or celebrates and like gets high off a of substance, whether it be anything too much, and especially 24 hours a day, like every day, there's a consequence. There's a suffering that comes with that indulgence. Um, with sobriety, yeah, the suffering that comes with not being able to get high or not being able to trip out and get like really intense peaks of emotions or senses. But that's also kind of more than it's cracked up to be. You know, some of that's delusional and like over exaggerated. Like, yo, that movie was fucking crazy. And it really was just kind of lame or it was like, whoa, they did some really good effects. If you watch it when you're sober, you're like, okay, I was kind of probably just high and everything was like thrown at me. I remember I'd come in from being high and like, Game of Thrones, it would it would be like they're talking about me and my ex-wife would be sober and I'd be like, oh shit, they know that I'm high, you know, like, come on, like, this shit's way exaggerated. When you're twisted in your mind, it's just like, it's really not reality, but anyway, I don't know what else I'm talking about here. So what did I find myself doing with all the extra free time? Basically... You don't need to fill time up. See, in the beginning, it's hard because you feel like, ah, oh, I can't stop thinking about this or I got to do so Yes, you should come up with positive activities like physical fitness or creativity, producing art or music, or even if you're, you like to read or do anything to definitely focus and channel your energy into an activity, I would definitely say... But there's always, I've never been bored throughout my whole life. I've always, there's never a time when I'm bored. Maybe when I was high and I'd be like, oh, I'm fucking bored. I want, it's something like FOMO, like it's something else going on. Oh, I want to do something. Maybe that, but I'm always catching up on YouTube tutorials, learning, progressing, trying like new skills, new uh, mediums. I'm an artist, so like there's a, there's a million things I haven't done that I want to do. There's a lot of half done things that I haven't attended to. So I just keep myself busy. Actually, once you start to get sober, you don't really even need to keep yourself. It's not like a matter of like, oh shit, what do I do? You just live life. Like every day is just kind of, actually days go by quick and you know, you just basically live in normal. Um, things balance out. They become regulated where you just don't even, like I swear, it sounds, I feel all pompous. Like, oh, you don't even think of it. No, you really don't. You won't believe how much clarity and like like empty space that like it filled up a lot of my thought process every day i used to think about that every day and it's like 
a lot of hours throughout the day. When will it, when, how long until the next time, blah, blah, blah. All those weed maps is what I call it. Once you don't even need that, it's amazing. Like you just literally, you have time for other things to come into your life. You know, I don't know how else to describe that. I guess it's just, you. it moves out. You're like, see you later, it's gone. It's, it's, it's not taking up your mental space, you know? But I would definitely say don't rudiment, like don't overthink about it. Because if you do find yourself thinking like, should I, should I not, should I? If you're wavering back and forth, you definitely have to watch a movie, go call somebody, talk, go out running, walking around. And like right now I'm walking, right? I have to pay attention to my feet, not stepping on something, some dog shit, not falling in a hole. There's movement that I don't want to get hit by a car, I'm in the city. There's all kinds of things that your brain will start doing automatically. Subconsciously, I'm holding out the phone. I didn't even realize. I'm, you know, there's, I'm blind to a lot of things, but my mind's working in the background. So definitely get yourself moving, your blood flowing, and put yourself in somewhere else. Don't just sit in a room thinking, should I, should I not? Maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. No, you have to 100% say, I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm not over it yet. It's gonna suck. I'm gonna hate this, but I can get better. I see people that got sober. I see people that go through it and now they're coming out, you know, one month or whatever, they're starting to be like, I feel amazing, I feel great. There's people like me, five years, I haven't smoked. I'm not trying to say that as like a badge, but I will say it every time because you gotta understand, I never thought that would happen. But it's so real, like the light is at the end of the tunnel, like it really is true. I promise you, if you could just cry it out, scream it out, feel it out, like go up in a ball, take a nap, do whatever the fuck you gotta do, but don't fall back into that. Because you already know that loop, you already know that lifestyle is never going to get you anywhere. That lifestyle is going to be the same shit that you've been through a million damn times in your life. What you need to do is suffer, push through a little bit further, and then you're going to get to the shedding of like the old life, the old you, and you're going to start to feel this anchored, strong stability. And you're going to be like, I actually am like walking through life without needing some shit. It's freedom. So like I heard like when you drop something, you're actually free from it. So it's not that like you lost something, you gained like freedom. So it's like, I know that sounds, it's kind of hard to understand, but like when you have these attachments and these things and desires and needs every day, I need this, I need that, it's heavy, it's, it's, it's like a burden. When you let it go, it sucks the letting go, it's like a healing, definitely, but I'm telling you, it's only a few months. Once the healing happens, the weight is gone, the lifted, you're lifted, you're literally constantly lifted without the need of something to lift you. You just feel natural things that you were born with. We were born with arms, legs, you know, all my limbs. If, if you were fortunate enough to be gratefully born with these senses and abilities, then that's all you need. And what's amazing is you balance out your um, dopamine levels, your need of like a super high is like totally evened out and your, your body chemical balance is normalized so normal things like walking around looking at these budding trees and like feeling the wind seeing how clear this blue sky is in my silhouette it's like it's trippy anyway it's like as if you're high every day anyway because you're just like life is a trip you know life is crazy it's amazing like i don't need anything more to make me trip out even harder like don't need it been there too you know what i'm saying been there also it's a, if you can see that like more and more it's like crust it's like it's just gonna shed off you and start washing like it's all gonna come out in the wash all right let me um read another thing i'm a painter i was always high at work i don't miss it i'm more productive now hell yes yeah. so yeah it's so true you could go hours and zone out and paint and do art whereas before you used to be always stopping to get a little bit or oh i gotta get in the mood i've gotta everything's got to be set up basically it's just the addict mentality saying oh i need this stimulation in order to really get in that zone and to flow and to do that no man if you sit down for 10 minutes 20 minutes doing anything whether you have to write a poem a song do your taxes whether you have to write a grocery list whether whether you have to exercise and stretch if you just sit down and do it then you're past now you're doing it now you're not thinking about doing it you're actually just in the zone doing it so you say give yourself five ten minutes okay i'm going to do this goal that i've always wanted to do just give yourself ten minutes and then before you know it two hours is going to pass by and you're going to be in the flow because now you, it's like you broke 
through the start like you know now you're on your way to the finish like you started you know what i'm saying it's not just a mental concept anymore so yes uh, i'm way more clear and organized with my painting and understanding what i'm doing executing like from the ground up you know the sketches to the more developed erasing or figuring it out choosing my colors not fucking up leaving my paint on my brush to dry not being lazy to go off and call somebody or go out and do something but actually sticking with the art executing it and finishing it not getting lost in it because you're all distorted and high you know so like tons of paintings excuse me i've done a lot of murals i'm a graffiti artist for like 30 years now right 28 but there'd be tons of times where i'd be like rocking the painting and doing this doing the outline of my letters and doing this character or something and then after i do that you know boom i'd be like oh shit you know the sun's beating on me and now i'm like in a different state and I'm trying to paint and I'm going over stuff, I'm messing up my colors, I'm messing up, I'm like tripping on things. You know, just basically like intoxicated while you're trying to do something that's, I mean, needs some focus, you know? So anyway, when I paint now that I'm sober, it's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Peace, Tom Doobie. <laughs> cool name, man. Past the ditch from the left hand side and you can still enjoy music that's like you know that like i'd be listening to bob but like some music you know if it's glorifying it too much i'm i think for the first year or two maybe just don't really get into that because the really important thing is like triggering words like forgive me if i'm saying too many words that might make you it's weird how one little impulse one little word can make somebody go ooh, and then start glorifying and thinking of the good side of it all I'm saying is don't forget about the dungeon of the doom of like being sedated and high all the time, lethargic, tired, all the grogginess, the self-hate, the fucking paranoia, the the overthinking. Uh, you were going to go to like some party and then all of a sudden you smoke and then you're like, ah, no, nah, I think I'll go. You guys have fun. Um, you don't even go to the fucking gig because you're like in your crib and you think, oh, I'm just going to watch this movie that I've watched a million times or this episode and zone out. I don't know, man. Basically, all that shit is like barely happens ever. I mean, yeah, li life is not peachy keen and fucking puppies and rainbows. I definitely have troubles. Like, there's other vices that came about. I'll be like finding out that I'm addicted to marijuana. I mean, um, <laughs> I was. Uh, sugar, pornography, um, food, certain types of food, love, like addicted to falling in love, like all kinds of weird shit. Um, being a people pleaser, all these kind of things. But I would recommend looking into the 12 steps because, or a therapist, but like pretty much the 12 steps are therapy for an addict. So you go through your whole life, what made you become an addict. The 12 steps of MA is what I would um, recommend to anybody. The app is free, just go on any app store, marijuana-anonymous. And then you can look up meetings, the Zoom meetings, and you can also just read the, the 12 steps. Um, basically, I'm on like step eight. And I'm five years sober, but I'm only on step eight. Some people go through all the 12 in the first year or two. It's been taking me a long time. It's hard because you got to go through your whole life. Like, how did I wrong people? Where did I go wrong? How did I like, where was I selfish in life? Where are my resentments? What do I resent? You know, you write down all these things and then you got to make amends to people. You know, basically just shed the, like, change the old you and also be accountable for the old you. And then you also just therapeutically go through like why you even started smoking and because we all started for some reason you know um to make life feel better but it really doesn't it just makes it miserable <laughs> it really does as you know right you wouldn't be here if you didn't realize like damn this is really ruining my life so sorry if i'm not reading any of these um comments yeah anxiety insomnia like seriously like i would break night I would do Adderall and weed, so that was terrible. Like, I would stay up three days in a row, two days in a row, I'd be blazing all day, and then I'd be popping Adderall. It's like, how fucked up is that? My body crashed hard. I'd have an art job that was paying me like 4000 Like, I did a lot of artwork for Hasbro for the G.I. Joe, the movie. So I was getting like, I had to paint the actors that were in the movie. So I would paint illustrations of them for the toy package, right? So basically, they would send me all the photos of the costume and the actor. There was a movie, G.I. Joe. The movie is... Hasbro owns the toy line, but like The Rock is in it. Um, Dennis Quaid was in the first one. 
Marlon Wayne. So I'm sitting there painting portraits of like real live actors, you know, and I'm like, I mean, famous, famous people and I'm doing an illustration and I'm like out of my tree, but I was really, I am really good, you know, at what I do. It's not that I can't do it when I'm in that state of mind, but basically it would take longer and I would have mad excuses on the deadline. But I was getting a lot of money and I, was, I don't know where I'm going with this or why I brought that up. But, um, oh yeah, I would basically break night because I was so fucking late. I would pop Adderalls and be like, oh, I'm just going to smoke and, and I'm going to do Adderall. And I'm going to get this job done, you know, and I'd be taking tons of naps. I'd be like stimulating myself in all kinds of ways. Just any way to like not face the truth that I was just fucking up and not getting the artwork done. So then finally, I, like I would get it done, but it was just a bad turmoil, you know, tons of turbulence. So all I'm saying is like that doesn't happen anymore. Um, I get healthy sleep now, eight hours a day, seven sometimes. Um, but yeah, the anxiety is gone. Like I don't even care if I walk into a place with everyone looking at me or I have to go on a microphone. I mean, I'm doing a live right now. I'd never do a live. If I was, if I was out of my tree, I'd be like, oh no, they're all gonna laugh at me. There's only three people watching this right now, but it, it is gonna be recorded. I don't know. Sorry if I'm walking and making this jittery as well. I don't do lives ever, so, um, but yeah, you definitely become more confident and stable and just, you just love yourself, you're just in, it's not any over boisterous like, oh, I'm on top of the world or I'm some tyrant or not, it, you just, you're just stable and you're just like you and there's not really that much over thought of judgments from others because you're just not in their head, you're just in your own head, you know, you're doing good for yourself, you're doing your best in life, you've done way worse. So when you're doing good for yourself, you just there's a sense of pride and there's a sense of confidence that comes with that, and uh, and there's no doubt because you just you're living it, you're living the truth, because when you're always high all the time and you want to live some other way, you want to be sober. It's like you're living this kind of lie. It's like you're in this mixed up duality, and you're always like, ah, oh, I want to be this way, but I'm really acting this way. And all I'm saying is, it's very possible to become united with yourself to get sober. You just gotta go through some pain of like, of just getting sober, you know, recovery is not easy. But once you do it, you do start to become united and, and whole and like, uh, just sound like, you know, things are just sound. And even when there's tough times in life, you're able to process it. You're able to actually comprehend it. You're not like, oh man, I'm just fucking gotta get high. Uh, I can't believe this happened to me. Let me just go get blasted. Like those are all stupid excuses to just, really just kick your feet up and like take a little vacation from reality but you end up facing these things like there's definitely things I don't face you know it's a lot t life is hard in, in general but I don't know man uh thanks for everyone for watching I think I'm kind of babbling way too much but uh if I was helpful in any way I hope so if not um I just hope you have a great day and, and if it somewhat stimulated you to say you know there's somebody out there trying to be sober you know every day is a challenge just every day like they say one step at a time one day at a time keep yourself busy with new positive habits new things you got to try new things you got to like do some of them goals or like meet some of them aspirations that you always wanted to do sorry if the wind is actually bad for the mic damn i gotta do a live on the inside of my house sometime soon i'm all walking and shaking and it's chilly, so I'm going to go. I uh, wish you all the best today. Stay sober. One more day, you're going to get stronger. One more day. It's like another brick in the wall of your life and stability and sobriety, okay? All right. Much love to you. Peace. You can reach out to me anytime you need me. Just hit me up on this group, all right? Peace. Brian Life. Out. 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 Out of the zone. Look at that sun in the back. Wow. That's amazing. I don't even know how to quit this.